W. Gurley was born on December 25, 1868, in Huntsville, Alabama. In 1876, his parents, John and Rosanna, moved the family to Pine Bluff, Alabama. Gurley had three siblings, John, 1870 through 1941, Millie, 1872, and Robert, 1874. Gurley was a graduate of the Branch Normal School of Jeff County, Arkansas. He married the former Emma Evans on January 25, 1888 in Jeff, Arkansas. She was born in 1870. Gurley was not a native Oklahoman, but moved to the Oklahoma Territory at a time when blacks in the thousands moved to the area that they saw as a mecca for the establishment of black towns. He was a participant in the Oklahoma land rush of 1889. According to other biographers, he resigned a presidential appointment by the administration of President Grover Cleveland to seek his future out west. In 1906, Gurley moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he bought 40 acres of land that was only allowed to be sold to black folks. One of Gurley's first businesses was a rooming house which was built along a dusty trail near the railroad tracks. This road would later become Greenwood Avenue of the legendary Black Wall Street. Adding to the rooming house, Gurley went on to build three two-story buildings and five residential homes. He also purchased an 80-acre farm in nearby Rogers County. The entrepreneur later founded a church, today known as Vernon AME Church. By 1913, more businesses began springing up in Gurley's Greenwood District, including hotels, law and doctor's offices, cafes, pharmacies, barbershops, movie theaters, and hair salons. Eventually, there were hundreds of businesses, and all were black-owned and operated. Greenwood's unpaved roads served as Tulsa's racial division line, and African Americans flocked to the thriving city to escape racial prejudice elsewhere. After years of economic success and the thriving black enclave, the entrepreneur lost all he had built after an angry white mob attacked and set fire to the Greenwood District, burning everything to the ground. He lost an estimated $200,000 in the 1921 race war. That's an estimated $2.6 million in today's currency. He never recovered and left Oklahoma. He moved to Los Angeles, California. Greenwood flourished and became a symbol of black wealth, pride, and unity. At its height, the business center boasted of various grocery stores, nightclubs, drug stores, churches, funeral homes, restaurants, banks, hotels, and the likes. The community was completely self-sufficient and became the home of many black multimillionaire entrepreneurs. With this growth and success came envy from the white Tulsans. Many of the businesses in Greenwood, which they referred to as Little Africa, were prosperous than those in the white community. Racial and economic tensions soon came to a boil in May of 1921. On May 30th, Dick Rowland, a 19-year-old shoe shiner at a Main Street parlor, took the elevator at a nearby building to use the restroom. At the time, the white elevator operator on duty was 17-year-old Sarah Page. What happened while the two were in the elevator remains unclear, yet it resulted in Page accusing Rowland of sexual assault. Although she never pressed charges, the damage was done. The story made front page of the Tulsa Tribune with the headline, Nab Negro for Attacking Girl in Elevator, while rumors began circulating that a white lynch mob was searching for Roland. The incident further divided the town with one side believing Roland raped Page and the other holding on to the belief that he simply tripped as he got onto the elevator and grabbed onto Page's arm as he tried to catch his balance. Hundreds began to gather outside of the county jail that held Roland. First, a group of armed whites, followed by a group of armed black men fearful of Roland's safety and determined to protect him. 
What ensued was one of the most devastating riots in American history, an event that can only be characterized as terrorism. Before dawn, a mob of angry white men stormed into Greenwood armed with guns, some provided by local officers who also participated in the riot. Hundreds of businesses and homes were ransacked and set afire. Black men, some who served in World War I, rallied together and armed themselves, ready to fight for their families and community. Whites indiscriminately shot and killed men, women, and children on foot and by car. As the number of casualties on both sides escalated, airplanes used in World War I were dispatched, firing rifles at residents and dropping firebombs on the black community. Outnumbered and outgunned, the riot grew worse for black Tulsans. Countless families began to flee after being trapped between rampant flames and gunfire. By the end of the attack, close to 300 blacks were murdered while many others were left injured, homeless, and held in intimate camps by local law enforcement. Although the official death toll was 300 black lives lost, there were multiple mass unmarked graves that were counted. Some estimate the death toll could be in the thousands. All in all, 600 businesses, 21 churches, 30 grocery stores, two movie theaters, six private airplanes, one hospital, one bank, a school system, all were destroyed in the riot. By 1942, remaining black Tulsans rebuilt Greenwood without any assistance from the state and saw a resurgence of over 240 businesses. The story of Tulsa's Black Wall Street remains one of the most inspirational and devastating parts of our history, yet it is still unknown by many.